Hello Drupalers! In this video we are going to discuss about caching, particularly about cache context and cache tags. For this we have a custom module that displays a block with a random number. As you can see I'm using Drupal 10 and PHP 8.1. Okay, let's get into it. First we have just a simple custom block, nothing special, that has an inline template that displays a custom string with a random number between 1 and 1000. And that's it. So if you look at the current behavior, uh, once the cache is cleared, the number is generated. And if we reload again, the number stays the same, no matter how many times we refresh the page. So let's assume that we want to have a um, different number based on a, a context. And we already know that Drupal offers us with uh, different cache contexts like uh, logged in user or path or query string or there are multiple cache contexts available. Um, but we're not going to go into that. Let's create our own cache context to see how that's done. So for this, I'm going to create a new file called module name, in my case, potato cache services YAML. And here, of course, we need the services key. And usually, in my case, I like to look in the code because it's a very good way to get inspired from. So if I type in cache context and a dot, I can see other types of cache context defining core. So usually I like to start from here. In this case, I'm going to just copy this and paste it here and we're gonna go through each line so first we want our cache context to start with cache context dot and then name it whatever we want i'm gonna name it potato odd even and then of course we need a class our class is gonna have the following namespace drupal potato cache cache folder and then our class name which i'm gonna name it odd even context and for now we don't need any uh, injected services so i'm going to remove the arguments and the tags we're going to leave it to name cache context because this is required so now let's create our folder cache and we're going to create our class with the namespace that we mentioned potato cache cache there we go now of course, we could look um, at what we search here, IP cache context, uh, to get an idea what they did, but we know for sure that we need to implement the cache context interface. So we're going to do that. Implement cache context interface. And now if you have a smart IDE, you can generate the methods that are required for this. Um, but if not, you can of course go visit the interface. And you can see that you need the get label, you need the get context, and you need the, the get cacheable metadata. Back to our class, our label is gonna be odd even. Cache context, we're gonna define it. And the get cacheable metadata really depends on the complexity of the cache context. You can read more about this here. It says that an empty object means that this can optimize away safely. So this is like the very basic uh, scenario. And then you have, you know, based on max age and other stuff, but we are not going to go there. So for us, an empty object is the way to go. So we're just going to return new cacheable metadata. There we go. Now the get context uh, method is going to do the main job here. <laughs> This will tell Drupal to display one thing in multiple ways. So, for example, we can say that we have a number. We're going to start very basic here. A number 4 and a number 23 that I'm going to keep commented. So we are going to say if number is divisible by 2, then we want to return, let's call it potato even. Otherwise, we are going to return potato odd. And that's it. How do we use this uh, cache context? Well, uh, since we have a block, we are going to use it uh, with the available methods from the block, which are public, function, get, cache, context. 
And here we want to keep the parent's cache context and merge with ours. So we're going to return a merge using the cache helper class. So cache merge context. We're going to get the parent cache context. Get cache context. Merge them with our cache context, with, which is the ID that we put here, potato odd even. So we're going to copy this, we're going to put it here. And that's it. And now if we, if we load the page, we already cleared the cache previously and we didn't enter the site. So this should be effective now. We have a random number 278. We refresh it, we go another page, it's still the same, it doesn't matter. We go back in the code. And we assume that now the number changes to 23. We go back on the site. We had 278. We refresh. We have 904. Refresh, refresh. And now if we put back to 4, 278. So our cache context is working. You can also do it by path or by any other. Maybe you have a special logic by date, by whatever. But the most important thing is that Get context will decide what variation should be displayed based on just a string. So the logic of the string can be anything. Now back to the block class. Let's see how these cache tags are being displayed. I'm going to go quickly to the preprocess block function. I already have here commented. So I just want to dump the variables that are uh, holding the renderable array for the whole block. Uh, you can use your preferred way of debugging. My preferred way of debugging is dump. So if you look here and we search for cache, we see that on the whole elements render array, we have our potato odd even. We also have the parents, which is, you know, the language, the theme and the user permissions. These are other cache context. So this applies to the whole block, but we can also do it on the render array. So if I comment this out, so this is the preferred way in the block, but let's assume we don't have a block. We have a render array or our render array is more complex and only a part of it needs to have this variation. In this case, we are going to add a key called cache. And inside that key, we're going to say context. And here, we're going to add our potato out even. The behavior will still be the same because we are applying the cache context on our render array. It just is at a lower level inside the block. Let's clear the cache and now we can refresh. See, now we have the content and the cache context is here. If we look back in the elements, We have the default cache context applied on the whole block. And then just on the content, we have our potato even. And now let's look at tags. What are tags? So we already established that cache contexts are deciding which variation of content to display based on some criteria. But then we have cache tags and cache tags are used for invalidating data. So in our case, we have this block that we were playing with before. We saw that cache context uh, custom cache contexts need to be defined, they need to be uh, presented as services, they need to have an ID and all that. On the other hand, cache tags are just created on the fly, let's say, so we don't need to define them. We're going to start with an existing example. Each entity comes with cache tags for ID. For example, nodes, they have their cache tag built like entity type ID, which is node and then ID. This is a cache tag. So for our example, we are going to say invalidate our block so let's build our function for cache tags is the same as cache context we're gonna do the same cache merge tags parent get cache tags and then we're gonna add node one so this will generate in the render array of the block uh, another section here called tags and it will say invalidate my blocks cache whenever this tag is invalidated which means now that we let's say clear the cache refresh 
So our number is 493. If we go to content and we select node 1, this is node 1, we're just gonna edit it. Save. Now our block should be invalidated. 188. If I go to test 2, this is node ID 2 and I save it, this won't affect our block. And the same as before, we can also add it here, like tags, and we could do something like node 1. But we can also use a method provided by the cache helper to build a tag for example, cache, build tags, our prefix is node, and our ID is, is one. This is when you want to, like, we can put one and two here, the IDs, and this will generate, I mean, I can show you, one and two. I'm just gonna dump this again, clear the cache. And now, so we put this in the build. If we look at the build, we have tags, node 1 and node 2. This is more elegant if you want to uh, generate more cache tag. But if you just want one simple tag, then you can put, I don't know, potato something. And this is a valid cache tag. But how do you invalidate this? Well, there are various ways. We are going to clear the cache, refresh the page. And we have our number... 663. Now we know that our block can get invalidated by potato something or node 1. We can use drush. If I use drush cache, then I will get an example of what commands are available. In this case, we are interested in cache tags. Invalidate by cache tags. Let's go back quickly to the site. I'm just gonna refresh a few times. 663. Now, we want to say, please invalidate node 1. And it says, invalidate tags node 1. Refresh. The number change is now 697. We're going to invalidate by our custom cache tag. Drush, cache tags, please invalidate potato something. Invalidated tags, potato something. What's happening now? 370. And of course you can do it in code. I want to give a quick example. So I'm quickly going to build a potato cache module. And here I'm going to uh, create a entity type update, let's say. And I'm going to say... Let's use taxonomy term. So whenever a taxonomy term is updated, we want to invalidate the specific tags. And we see that uh, the expected argument is an array of strings. So I'm going to say potato something. I'm just going to simplify it. Perfect. Now we clear the cache. So... Now our block can be invalidated by potato something and node 1. We are going to refresh the page. Our number is 820. We're just going to go to taxonomies. I'm going to create one. The number should still be the same because we implemented the hook update. And now if we edit and save and we go back here, our cache is invalidated. So these are the basic ways that you can invalidate cache tags. And that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks and see ya.